Holly, let's bring in Richard Goldberg. He's a senior advisor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and a former National Security Council official. Richard, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so the Israeli army further advancing into Gaza. We also have some widespread airstrikes into Lebanon. What is your assessment of the war at this stage? Well, in Gaza, Israel has advanced uh, quite well. In northern Gaza, they're signaling that the days of Hamas in northern Gaza are numbered. Uh, we're seeing the Israeli control of Gaza City in most parts, uh, some of the neighborhoods and cities north of Gaza City. So that part of the campaign is going well. The south is where a lot of the work remains, weeks probably on end, to clear out Hamas from some of the larger cities. Uh, we think of Khan Yunus, uh, the second largest city in Gaza, where we believe the Hamas leader is hiding, where many hostages may be hiding. Israel is finding intense urban warfare there. They're also discovering an intense tunnel infrastructure, mm. much larger than previously assessed in the South. I'd like to put President Biden's statement on the death of two American hostages, uh, Judy and Good Haggai, on the screen. He says, I will never forget what their daughter and the family members of other Americans held hostage in Gaza have shared with me. They've been living through hell for weeks. Prime Minister Netanyahu met with the representatives of 28 hostage families. How big of a headache is the hostage issue for him at this stage? Well, I think it's important for all Americans to remember this is one of the largest terror attacks on American citizens, not just on Israel. The death toll is now increasing as we start having confirmations of hostages being dead, now at least 34, I believe. And so while we think about six to eight hostages remaining uh, in Gaza, uh, we also need to say, where is the president to put pressure on Qatar uh, mm. to actually deliver these hostages? Qatar is a U.S. ally, supposedly, hosts a major base. We don't see any statements from the White House saying we want Doha to secure their release, that we will actually penalize the Qataris, downgrade our relations if we don't see American citizens released. That's a key missing piece. Yes, Netanyahu is definitely under domestic pressure, but there is widespread political support for this campaign to continue. Let's play some sound from an IDF spokesperson on the headache that is Iran. Our perspective is one that Iran is a is there is a problem not only for Israel but a worldwide problem. Uh, we see the nature of how Hamas conducted their attacks. We can't let that be the new norm of terrorism, can we? Richard, what needs to be done about Iran? Well, it's unconscionable right now that there's $10 billion being made available to the regime by the Biden administration. They issued a waiver after October 7th to make that money available. That should be locked down. There's a bill in the Senate waiting for the Senate to take that up. The House already passed it. That should happen. We should be cracking down on their oil sales and transports to China. We should be snapping back the U.N. sanctions as well. But we also have to have a military deterrence, in effect. That applies to Yemen. We have not seen a military response against the Houthis. And mm -hmm. we need to be supporting Israel against Hezbollah in the north. Remember, Hezbollah is 10 times larger and more lethal than Hamas. That has to be a threat that's dealt with sooner or later. Israel is not going to allow that threat to remain on its border. Rich Goldberg, thank you for your time and your analysis today. Thanks, Mike.